Hi, I'm Dane Quinn from the University of Akron. The last video lecture that I gave was a motivation for studying sign forcing for single degree of freedom systems. In that, I showed that if we knew the solution when the system was forced by sine functions, then we could develop the solution when systems were forced by cosine functions. And if we know those two, using Fourier series, we could actually develop the solution for any periodic forcing. So studying signs is a, is a good thing, right? A, it's, it's fairly useful, but more importantly, it generalizes to a lot of different examples. However, in that lecture, I didn't really tell you what the solution was, right? I just said, kind of, let's assume that we can find it. In today's lecture, we're going to go through and actually derive the solution for single degree of freedom systems forced by sinusoidal functions. So here it is again, right? This is our spring mass damper system. We can write any single degree of freedom system that we come across as an equivalent version of this. And we have some time-dependent forcing. So now we'll assume that f of t is f naught, which is an amplitude, sine omega t. And as a result, the equation of motion becomes mx double dot bx dot plus kx equals, again, f naught, sine omega t. So here, f naught is a forcing amplitude. And omega t is the forcing frequency. I want to emphasize that this is not to be confused with the natural frequency of the system, or even the damped natural frequency. Those are both properties of the system, and they describe how the system responds when there's no forcing at all. This is a forcing frequency, right? So it describes the frequency of the forcing that's being applied to this system. So clearly, omega n, which would be the square root of k over m, is not necessarily the same as omega, right? Instead, omega is a different quantity altogether. In that last lecture, we also talked about the importance of, of particular solutions. For systems with damping, the homogeneous solution, which has all of the dependence on the initial conditions, ends up decaying away. And so as time goes by, the response of a mechanical system ends up being closely approximated and exponentially closely approximated by its particular solution. So we really want to go through and figure out what this is. Well, how do I solve an equation like this? We solve it with the method of undetermined coefficients, or as I like to call it, the method of really good guessing. Because I have to guess a solution and then try to make it work. Fortunately, someone once showed me what the right guess was. And now I'm going to show it to you. Here it is. x of t is some amplitude, which remains to be determined. Sine, the same frequency as the forcing. And then minus phi. So here... This amplitude and this phase shift are unknown. And we need to determine them so that this solution solves this equation. But they're undetermined coefficients, which is the method. How do I figure out what they are? Well, I just go and take this and substitute it into the equation. Right? So we need the velocity. x dot here is x times omega cosine omega t minus phi. Then the second derivative, right, which we also need, is minus x omega squared sine omega t minus phi. So we'll basically take these three things, right, with these unknown amplitudes and phases, put it back into this equation, and then see if we can make it work. Of course we can, 
Otherwise, I wouldn't really be going through all of this. So we get m minus x omega squared sine omega t minus phi. Let's substitute in x dot. Right, so that's x omega cosine omega t minus phi. And finally, let's substitute in x itself. x sine omega t minus phi. And that has to equal, now f naught, sine omega t. Let's collect some terms, right? In particular, over here on the left, I've got two, p, two sine terms, and I have a cosine term. So these two sine terms, I'm going to throw together. So we get minus m omega squared times the amplitude. Over here I get a plus k times the amplitude. Sine omega t minus phi. And then I have these, this cosine term, b omega times x. And cosine omega t minus the phase shift is the right-hand side. So if this is a solution, right, what we've assumed here, then this equation has to be satisfied for all time. What that really means is that for any value of t that I choose, this left-hand side has to be equal to the right-hand side. Now, it doesn't look like it's quite so easy to do that, right? Because here I've got some sines, and, and i got some sines over here. They have different phases. i got some cosine terms, right? So how do we do this? Well... Here's the equation again that I've, I've rewritten for you. And we do this by expanding these harmonic functions, right? So, for example, sine omega t minus phi. We can use one of our angle addition formulas and show that's sine omega t times cosine of phi minus cosine omega t times sine of phi. Likewise, we could do this for cosine. And we would see cosine omega t times cosine of phi plus sine omega t times sine of phi. I could take these and substitute them in and then collect coefficients of sine and cosine, right? If all of the sine pieces vanish and all the cosine pieces together vanish, right? Then everything vanishes. But you know what? I'm not going to do that because that's a lot of terms. Notice that I only have one of these, this sine omega t. So actually, I'm going to transform that one instead. It just makes the algebra a little bit easier. After all, sine omega t is sine omega t minus phi plus phi. Right? So I've just subtracted and added a phi here. But now I'll expand this in terms of this piece and then the phi, right? So we end up with sine omega t minus phi times cosine of phi and plus cosine omega t minus phi and sine of phi. Again, I could take these two, put it in, or I can just take this, and then I'll collect terms of this sine omega t minus phi and this cosine omega t minus v. Right, so when I do that, well, let's go ahead and write everything out again. Minus m omega squared times x plus k times x sine omega t minus v. My next term is b omega times x cosine omega t minus v. And then... I'm going to replace sine omega t by this expression. All right, so we get f naught times sine omega t minus phi times cosine of phi and cosine omega t minus phi and a sine of phi. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, but I will promise you that the algebra here is a little bit easier. Now we'll collect coefficients. And we'll collect coefficients of sine omega t minus phi 
and cosine omega t minus v. Let's do the sine pieces first. Here I'm going to factor out this x. So we end up with minus m omega squared plus k times x equals, over here on the right, f naught cosine of phi. For our cosine term, we have b omega times x equals f naught sine of phi. So if these two are satisfied, then we have 0 times sine plus 0 times cosine equals 0. So everything works out. That's great. How do we solve for now the amplitude and phase? Well, the easiest way is to recognize that, for example, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Right? So let's just square each one of these equations and then add them together. Right? On the right-hand side, we'll get minus m omega squared plus k times x, this whole thing squared. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that piece in as well. b omega x squared equals, well, f naught cosine squared plus f naught sine squared. Obviously, that will get rid of the phi. Then we can actually divide these two equations one by another. All right, so we'll have f naught sine of phi divided by f naught cosine of phi. And that's going to be equal to b omega times x divided by minus m omega squared plus k times x. All right, so again, a lot of things happen, right? The f naughts cancel out, the x's cancel out. Uh, here, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So this first equation leads to x equals f naught on the right-hand side. And then I will divide by the square root of, and let's flip these around so it's k minus m omega squared plus b omega squared. There it is. There's the amplitude. Sine of a cosine is tangent, right? So the tangent of phi is b omega divided by k minus m omega squared. And of course, we can solve for the phase shift phi from here. This is it, actually. This is the solution. If I have a forced equation right, with sine forcing, then the particular solution looks like an amplitude sine omega t minus a phase shift. And that amplitude is given by the forcing amplitude divided by all of this stuff. So it depends on the stiffness and the damping and the mass and the frequency. And then the phase of the response relative to the forcing is given here. Again, depends on the mass and the stiffness and the damping and the frequency. One important thing to note is that the frequency of the response, right, so this is the response, is identical to the frequency of the forcing, right? Remember the forcing was sine omega t, and so the response is sine omega t and then delayed by some phase shift. So the system responds at the same frequency that it's forced at. And it doesn't matter what omega is, it always responds at that forcing frequency. So let's go and look at a, a really quick example. Right again, here are our results. This is the equation of motion, the solution, the amplitude, and the phase. Let's assume that we have our single degree of freedom system with sine forcing. And for these values of the parameters, mass is 120, B is, you know, 1.6 times 10 to the third, K is given, and the forcing amplitude and frequency are also given. Let's find the response of the system. Let's find that particular solution. Now, I do want to point out that I've given this problem 
in terms of hertz. Right? So the forcing frequency was given as 3 hertz. We have to use radians per second. So we've got to transform hertz into radians per second. Well, omega is 3 times, well, 1 hertz is 2 pi radians per second. And as a result, it's 6 pi radians per second. Again, you have to use radians per second whenever you're doing these kinds of calculations. It doesn't matter what the problem gives you, right? You have to use radians per second in order to calculate things. So let's go and actually just calculate these, the numerator and the denominator separately, right? So here, k minus m omega squared. We have all these values. This ends up working out to a numerical value of minus 2.264 times 10 to the fourth newtons per meter. All right, so I just took my calculator, bugged all this stuff in. Did the same for B omega, and I got 3.016 times 10 to the fourth newtons per meter. Right, the units here are consistent. And from there, we'll just calculate the amplitude in the phase. All right, so here, the amplitude is, well, it works out to be 3.978 times 10 to the minus 2 centimeters. And the phase, well, I want to be a little careful on the phase. Phase is in terms of tangent, tangent sine over cosine. Right, so here, that's going to be 3.016 times 10 to the fourth divided by minus 2.264 times 10 to the fourth, which equals minus 1.332. However, we've got to be careful, right? Because tangent's multivalued. This value of the tangent could have a solution in the fourth quadrant, or it could have a solution in the second quadrant. Now, in the second quadrant, sine is positive, and cosine is negative. In the fourth qu quadrant, sine is negative and cosine is positive. So this phase shift has to be in quadrant two. Or phi is 126.9 degrees, which is equal to 2.215 radians. For these systems, Right, for our single degree of freedom mechanical systems, this phase must lie in quadrants 1 or 2. If in your calculator you take the inverse tangent and you get something in the fourth quadrant, well, you have to transform that into the second quadrant. So you've got to be a little careful when you're calculating the phase here. So what I've done here is, is I have shown uh, two things. Right? This is, in, in the light blue line, essentially the forcing. And this is actually done to scale. Really what this represents is f of t divided by k. Right? Notice that has units of, of length. Essentially, this would be like the static response to this system, right, if we forgot about the dynamics. Right, so again, this is a measure of the forcing. And then in the dark blue line, I've actually plotted the response, amplitude and phase. Right, so this dark blue curve is x of t. I want to point out again that there's a phase shift between these two responses. So the forcing peaks at some value, and then a little time later, the response peaks. They're at different peaks, but what's important is, is when in time these two responses reach their maximum points, or you know when they become zero. This phase shift is obviously related to phi, our phase of, of the sine function, right? But in time, it's also related to the frequency.
right? So the, the time duration, say delta here, is the phase phi divided by omega, right? So that gives me the time delay between the peak of the forcing and the peak of the response. The response always lags the forcing. So again, an example, right, where we see that our harmonic forcing produces a harmonic response that has a different amplitude and is shifted in time. So, right, that's the general solution. Now, we're not done with this. If all I wanted to do was just calculate a bunch of things, right, tell me the amplitude, tell me the phase, then I could be finished. But I'm interested in more than that. I'd like some insight into how this behaves as the system parameters vary. Maybe, maybe I want to do some design, right? Maybe I want to design my system to stay away from places where the amplitude is large. That requires us understanding how these functions change, in particular the amplitude changes as we vary the system parameters. Right, so that'll actually be our next lecture, really going and looking at this amplitude and the phase in such a way that we can kind of make sense of, of what happens in terms of the response of the system as the parameters vary. But for now, we have the solution, right? So this allows us to determine the response given the parameters of the system. So that's it. Thanks so much, as always. Um, if you have any comments or feedback, please let me know. Take care. Bye.